When I was 17 years of age, I was involved in an armed robbery at Snack Food that was located on Robinson Road. When we were making our getaway on a motorbike, uh, we were intercepted by a patrol car. We had to ditch the motorbike. We end up in this particular area. We now had to run on foot. My partner in crime, he got away. But I was arrested directly in the back of this church. <laughs> directly in the back of the church, I was arrested with a bag full of money and two handguns uh, in that regards. And so, in my book, I would have uh, more or less uh, wrote about uh, that event uh, in that regards. And I'm also presenting three copies of my book to the church on this evening. Uh, and I also have several copies of with me that is for sale for $16 that normally retails for $24 in our local bookstores. But nonetheless, uh, some 23 years ago, now I'm here to testify. Amen. God is good. Amen. And all the time. God is good. One of the things I want to share with young people in particular, uh, and that is uh, the best way in which you can honor your parents the best way in which you can show respect to your parents is simply by obeying them. Amen. Uh, we all are familiar with the scripture found in Exodus chapter 20 verse 12, where God says, honor your father and your mother that it will upon the land in which the Lord your God has given to you. And one will have to ask the question, why God put such a high priority on children? to honor their parents? Why did he put such a high priority on children to obey their parents? Why? Pretty simple. Because through obeying our parents, through listen, listening to their instructions, through following their advice, adhering to their rules, it can save our lives. It can save us a lot of unnecessary pain, hurt, and hearts. And all of us can testify to the fact that there were times in our lives when we were grown up, we didn't listen to our father. We didn't take heed to mama's advice. And as a result, we paid the price. And some of those prices were hefty. Some persons paid the price with their lives in that regards. Understand this, young people. Everything bad that ever happened to me, my mother saw in the past. Everything bad. Before I had even made prison, she had saw my second trip to prison. And the hardship that I would have endured. I had not even made prisoners yet. And so forth. And so when we fail to listen to our parents, then we're going to fail. In that regard, there's an old African proverb that I love, and it states, what an, what an old man can see sitting down, a young man cannot see standing up. Young ladies, I need you to listen to me. What your mother can see in the dark, you cannot see in the light. Young people, I need you to hear me. What your parents can see with their eyes closed, you cannot begin to see with your eyes wide open. It's called wisdom, it's called intuition that comes with experience of life. Experience of living on this earth. Understand this. Your parents would have known of some individuals who were quite older than they were, who made some mistakes in that regard, and they grew up hearing about those mistakes. They would have also known some individuals who would have been to school with them, who were friends with them, who were related to them, who went on and made some mistakes, and they would have witnessed those mistakes for a They also would have known of individuals who were younger than them, who came up and made similar mistakes and saw how those mistakes would have messed up their lives. So when they see a particular behavior, when they see a particular attitude in you as a child, they can put their finger directly on your future and with a 99.999% degree of accuracy, predict your future. By telling you, if you don't change this attitude, if you don't change this behavior, this is what will happen to you. I see some of you looking at me funny as if I'm talking foolishness. So let me bring it home to you and share with you how accurately my mother predicted my future. 
When I was young and getting in foolishness, my mother would tell me, boy, if you don't change your ways, you're going to find yourself in a crowded prison cell and it's going to be you who's going to have to sleep next to the slot bucket. Well, as I was concerned, my mother never been to prison before. So she can tell me where I can sleep and what kind of cell it's going to be. Nonetheless, I went to prison once, nothing happened. Didn't even run across my mind. However, not until my second trip to prison did I find myself in a crowded prison cell that was designed for one individual. It was five inmates, five of us. And as I made up my bed to sleep on the concrete ground that night, and let me tell you something, you can never get comfortable sleeping on concrete. Never get comfortable. But as my mother used to tell me, boy, you make up your bed hard, you can lay hard. And that laying hard is a result of the choices and decisions we make in life. So as I made up my bed trying to get comfortable, I keep smelling this raw, the sewage scent. And I'm trying to figure where the scent was coming from. Look in the front, nothing's going on. And every, try, every time I try to drift off to sleep, the scent will come and wake me up. And so I looked behind me, and there it was, the slob bucket. My mother's words came back to greet me. Why? Didn't listen. Didn't take heed to my mother's warning. When I was younger, at age 16 and 17, I used to only go to church because mommy said go to church. And she used to say it forcefully too. You can't be under my roof if you ain't going to church. So I went to church only because she said to go to church. But I thought I was smart. So I would go to church. When the praise of worship was over, I slipped back out. And somehow she got me to to caught on to what I was doing. And I remember her pointing out to me an individual who was in the wheelchair, and she said to me, boy, if you don't stop from trying to duck the house of the Lord, you're gonna find yourself in this young man's scene predicament. I went to have someone to read you in the church on a Sunday morning. Apparently this particular individual they were fast like drinking, partying, and smoking, and one particular Friday evening he came, he was going home drunk, and he rode his car off. And now he was, he was paralyzed from the neck down. And now every Sunday he's in church. When he was out there partying and drinking and having a good time, now we used to attend church. Now every Sunday he's in church. I'm not in the wheelchair, thank God for that. But in order for me to go anywhere, in order for me to make it up here, right here, I had to extend my hand and put it on the shoulder of somebody. All because why? Didn't listen. Didn't take heed to my mother's warning. On the very night I lost my sight, my mother pleaded with me, Drexel, don't go. I have a bad feeling about you going out this night. I know you up to no good. Don't go out. I was 21 years of age. According to the law of the line, maybe 18, you consider what? There you go. So how could you tell a big grown man like me not to go out? And so forth. And so, my, and I looked across the street, I saw my uh, two friends pull up in a white, in a white, in a white van, which, which was supposed to be the getaway vehicle. And as I'm walking to the room to, uh, to get my gin bag that I contain my bulletproof vest, and as I'm walking out the door, my mother came walking behind me again, repeating the same words. Drexel, don't go out. Stay home. Don't go out. And I felt as if I just had to address my mother. And I, with one foot on the outside and the next foot on the inside of our front door, I looked back in my mother's eyes and said to me, I can be right back in the half an hour to 45 minutes. Mom. Trust me, I can be right back. You see what? You see, after joining the gang at the age of 16, I committed myself to the gang. And by the age of 20, I was one of its leaders. I robbed, starved, and shot my way to the top. I'm, I often say to individuals, uh, I'm not at the point in my life now, I'm watching an armored car vehicle with two armed security guards. I often say to individuals, I didn't just walk up. Wake up one, one morning and decide to rob an armored car vehicle. That came about as a result of other smaller robberies that I would have executed and gotten away. And now I know, not only do I have the confidence, but also the firepower. Before I lost my sight, I had some eight guns 
bulletproof wear, synchronized walkie-talkies, and I thought that I was the top dog. And so as I left home that night with my mother pleading with me not to go, never knew that that was going to be the last time that I was ever going to look my mother in the eyes. Because some 45 minutes later, I was lying on the ground after being shot four times. One to my head, and it knocked the lights out for good. It's been 20 years now. One to my shoulder, one to my left back, and one to my left eye. And after I had gotten shot those four times, I said to myself, don't you even move a finger. Because if you move again, if you move, you'll be shot again. And I blacked out, lost all consciousness. When I woke up again, it was a police officer who was checking the contents of my gym bag, and I heard him stick under his breath. <laughs> but he said, you should have your vest on, this wouldn't happen. <laughs> but those four shots had my name written all over it. The first shot was a head shot, the bulletproof vest doesn't protect the head. The second shot was to the very top of my shoulder. The vest doesn't protect it, only the front part and the back part. The, back, the, the, the third shot was to my left back. I mean, it would have protected, but it still would have been damaged. And the fourth shot was to my left back. All because why? Didn't listen. Didn't take heed to my mother's warning. And you know, as I lie on the ground that night with my life force slipping away from me, I knew that I was going to die. You see, I would have brought around the church long enough to realize to know if you live by the sword, and therefore the old folks used to say, who goes around? And so if you stop someone, look to get what? If you stop someone, look to get what? And if you shoot someone, look to get what? So I always knew I was going to get done done. And I had this little exit strategy. And my exit strategy was that whenever that was that day comes when I'm lying on the ground with several bullet wounds about my body, I just want to have enough breath left in me to ask the good Lord for forgiveness and to step quietly into heaven. <laughs> that was my exit strategy. The dozen scripture says in John chapter 1 verse 9, if you confess of your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Didn't want to, didn't want to live the life of a Christian, but I wanted to end benefits. Of it. But nonetheless, as I prayed that night, the little life force I felt drained away from me, it stopped. It stopped. My energy was not renewed, but whatever was left in the battle remained as it was. And let me tell you something, God is a deliverer. He has the prayers even of the common criminal. If you don't believe me, ask the thief on the cross. And you know, as I get ready to take my seat, the doctors and PMH don't, don't understand how I survived my head shot. I went to Cuba, three different days of tests and x-rays and examination and they themselves are blown away as to how I survived my head shot. But see, they don't know. On that ground that night, I know who I prayed to. And it was the Almighty God Himself whom I prayed to. It was Him who delivered me in that regard. And so as I get ready to take my seat, I humbly ask of you to keep me lifted up in your hands. To keep praying. It's not, it's a difficult road living a life with a disability. It's a, they have had some times in my life since losing my sight whereby I wished I had died on the night I had lost my sight. That's how difficult it was in that regard. So as you pray for me, I will, I will lift you up in prayer as well. God bless you. Okay. I thought I was getting ready to sit down, but I was asked to say a few more words. <laughs> <laughs>